What's up, YouTube? A lot of you guys asked for this, the best takeover and perks in NBA 2K24, so make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. This is the best guide right here to show you guys what the best players in the world use and run, and I'm sure I'm going to rank them uh, from worst to best, and yeah, let's get right to the video, guys. So right away, we're going to get into our takeover and what I like to run for takeover, so we're going to get right into it for our takeover, uh, takeover perk. What we run for our takeover perk. So right away we use sponge. So every good player uses sponge. If it's possible, guys, put on sponge. Um, I forgot how to earn it. I think I made a video on it a month ago. But get sponge. Sponge is, would be my number one. If you're playing a lot of fives and threes, I would put on sponge. The next best one. If you're playing a lot of twos and ones, I would put on accelerator. So accelerator was broken and overpowered last year this year accelerator is kind of bad but i would give accelerator the second best i'll give accelerator the second best the first best is a uh, sponge and then i see a couple people they sprinkle in saboteur saboteur is when a guarded opponent commits a turnover or a bad shot their takeover meter gets a larger penalty i see a couple people do saboteur but the best one is sponge because whenever a teammate does something good it increases your takeover meter so even even when you do something good, you're getting takeover. But say for example you're at 95% and your center throws it to your shooting guard and your shooting guard greens a three, you go from a 95% to 100% and you get your takeover off that. You, you get what I'm saying? So pretty much you're getting 5% for everything good your teammates do pretty much. So sponge is really good for that. Accelerator, I don't like accelerator because if your teammates score a three or uh, a dunk or something like that. You don't get anything to your takeover meter. You don't do. No, you don't get anything. So if you're watching the play and your teammates score without you involved in the play, you don't get any takeover. With Sponge, you'll get takeover every play. Like every play on the court, you'll get something. So Sponge is way better. Accelerate. Accelerate used to be the best last year, but they reduced the boost. So this is down right here. So if I had to rank these guys, I'll do Sponge. Sponge number one. I'll do Accelerate number two. And then for number three, I do saboteur. And then everything else, I don't even bother everything else. Trust me, guys. Don't even bother with everything else. Everything else is a waste of time. So uh, now we're going to look at our takeovers. I'm going to show gameplay. I don't want to bore you guys. So it's going to be rec gameplay or whatever. But remember, remember these takeovers right here. Remember these takeovers. Remember, A is finishing. A or X on uh, PlayStation. Square or X is shooting. Playmaking is triangle or Y. Uh, left bumper is defense rebounding. Right bumper is physicals. So remember that. A is finishing. X is shooting. Y is playmaking. LB is defense rebounding. Right bumper is physicals. So now I'm going to show gameplay, just right gameplay, just while as I talk, as I rank these. Make sure you guys like, uh, like comment, subscribe if you haven't. We're on a road to 10,000 subscribers. I love you guys. But we're going to rank them from worst to best. So let's go right at it. So right away, the worst one, the worst takeover on the game is finishing. Now, I know a lot of you guys might be surprised. Why is it finishing? Why is it finishing? So the thing with finishing, remember, I have every build on the game. I know I know how I dunk meter every play, standing, driving, all that. The thing with finishing this year is um, finishing is you can't really dunk on someone when they're right under the rim. Like, if they beat you to the spot and they're right under the basket and they have a step like in front of you and they're right on the basket, your meter is going to be small no matter what. Uh, you could put on a finishing takeover and your meter would be small no matter what. It's really hard to dunk people when they're right under the basket. Now, if they're on your hip or behind you, you can dunk every single time with a big meter every single time. Now, why I'm saying that this is when you activate finishing takeover, the meter is kind of the same length. It's pretty much the same. So when you activate Fisher Takeover, you don't get a bigger meter when they're in front of you. The meter is still small. Like I can activate Fisher Takeover and I'm driving dunk someone and they're in the paint in front of me. It'll be a small meter every time. So finishing doesn't even help you like that. So finishing is the worst by far. Uh, if you guys are popping fish and takeover, do not pop that uh, takeover. Do not use it. It's very, very bad in my opinion. So do not use fish and takeover. I, I think 
I think I only use fish and take over once and it's to like troll and have fun. But I still didn't gain anything from it. So it's a waste of time. The second second worst takeover. Uh, so this is uh, this is rank number four, I guess. So yeah, fishing is fifth best. Fourth best takeover, second worst, is physicals. So physicals, uh, I would pop physicals sometimes at lock. The thing with physicals is, if you guys have those fat locks with 95 strength, 90 strength, and you guys didn't really max your speed, like you have an 80 speed lock and stuff like that, uh, 90 strength, whatever. Sometimes when I'm playing lock, I would pop physicals and it'll make me run way faster and it makes me fight through screens. I'll pop physical and I'm like, yo, just sit low. I'm fighting through screens. It helps you fight through screens better and it helps you move faster on the court. So physicals is pretty good. Uh, there's nothing too much I can say about that. It doesn't give you like special abilities like these other takeovers in front of it gives you. It just gives you like just faster speed and fight through picks a little bit. But it doesn't give you any special abilities. And that's the thing with these takeovers. You want to pick things that give you special abilities because that gives you advantage in NBA 2K24. So finishing takeover and physicals do not give you any advantage in gameplay. So if you guys want advantages, do not pop finishing or physicals. So the third best takeover in the game, the third best is defense and rebounding. So the defensive take, the little like shield, is really good because I've noticed people get more steals with it. I've noticed people get a little bit more blocks with it. Uh, you can still dunk on it. It's not really that overpowered. Other years would be overpowered. Defensive take is not that overpowered this year. But, uh, yeah, you could you could get blocks a little bit more, steals a little bit more. Uh, but the big, the big thing with this defensive takeover thing is they added rebounding to it. So now when you pop this defensive takeover, you can see where the ball is going. So you get to see the future thing. So you get to see where the ball is going. You see where the ball is headed. You know if the rebound's going left or right. You know if the rebound is, uh, you know if the ball is airballing. You know when to grab the rebound, you know where to go. So it helps you on defense, but it helps you become a good rebounder and know where the rebound is going. So I think it's pretty good, but it's not game changing. These next two takeovers are game changing. And you're gonna be surprised where I put number two. Number two best takeover in the game is shooting. Now hear me out, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, yo, shooting isn't number one. I'm explaining why shooting is number two. And the reason why shooting is number two is because you could green more shots, you could green from further out, you could green from like almost half court, you could fade, you could green more contested shots. And the thing about shooting is if you guys played other two Ks, they added shot creator into that. So if you do step backs, if you do uh, moving shots, step backs, uh, spin shots, it'll break their ankles. You'll do ankle breakers while you have sharp take because they added the shot creator bat. It's like the shot creator take from other years, they added it into shooting. So when you activate shooting take, you can shoot from far, uh, you could fade, you could do ankle breakers, you could do shot creator shots, fades, uh, step back, spin shots, whatever. That's really good. So I'll put number two. A lot, of, But the thing is, with a lot of these guys, it's number two, but it's not the best takeover because the way I feel, uh, the way I see it is the best takeover makes everyone on the court better and it helps you win games. So shooting is really OP, especially if a really good guard has it. It's my second best. And I pop shooting take every single time. So this is a little disclaimer. Every time I'm playing for money, I pop shooting takeover. So because I'm the point guard. But the number one takeover on the game is playmaking takeover. So a lot of people will agree with this. A lot of people will disagree. But playmaking is the number one takeover at NBA 2K24. Now the reason for that is, remember your guards, your shooting guard and point guard, they wanna pop shooting takeover, right? So that's two players. Now, what does your lock power forward and center want to pop? They need a pop playmaking. So you get what I'm saying? I think playmaking is number one because three players have to use it. And I think shooting is number two because two players have to use it. So pretty much your point guard shooting guard have to shoot. They have to use uh, shooting shooting takeover. But your lock power forward center, they have to use playmaking takeover. And the reason playmaking takeover is so overpowered is because it gives you superpowers. First of all, playmaking takeover increases everyone's attributes. Everyone's attributes goes up on the court when you pop playmaking takeover. Second, playmaking takeover, if you pass the ball, 
Uh, so if you activate your playmaker you takeover and you pass the ball to a teammate, it, it upgrades their shot success percentage and allows them to hit more heavies or more open. So if you get the ball and you pass it off your playmaker takeover, your teammates get a huge green window, a huge boost. But also the ratings go up. But here's another aspect that a lot of people do not know about playmaking takeover that's really overpowered. A lot of people do not know this. Pro players know this. Let me know down below if you guys know what the last element of playmaking takeover is. Let me know. A lot of you guys are gonna skip this video. A lot of you guys not even gonna make it this far. But if you guys if you guys know the last element of playmaking takeover, which I'm about to say, leave a comment down below. The last element, the third element that makes playmaking takeover so overpowered, is it increases your takeover meter way faster. So pretty much, if I shoot a shot in my primary takeover, like on the screen, when you hit start, 2K gives you a takeover. So my primary takeover is usually sharp. So my players are usually sharp badge, or they're usually playmaking badge. So if my player, if I hit a jump shot in my playmaking, uh, my little, my little thing is sharp badge. You know, when I hit start, when the game starts, my badge is sharp. If I hit a jump shot, I'll get like 20%. But if someone has playmaking takeover and I hit a jump shot, I get 60, 70%. So if someone has playmaking take active, you could get your takeover in one shot or one assist or one steal, whatever it is. Playmaking take rewards you with takeover, with double takeover, pretty much for everything good you do on the court. You get like a two times uh, multiplier to your takeover. So if someone, pop, say for example, your center pops playmaking takeover, if your power forward gets a steal, his takeover times two, his meter fills up two times faster. If your lock gets a steal, his meter moves up two times faster. So imagine this, your your center grabs a, uh, grabs a rebound, he pops takeover, he pops playmaker takeover, he passes it to his shooting guard, his shooting guard passes it to the power forward, power forward shoots, right? The power forward's takeover goes up by like half a bar and your shooting guard gets takeover automatically. His bar fills up really quickly. So pretty much the three elements of playmaker takeover is it increases their attributes, it makes them shoot heavies and green more shots, and three, you get your takeover way faster when it's active. So you want your role players, like your lock, power forward, and center to activate playmaker takeover. What I see a lot of times in the rec, I even do it too. When I'm at center, I go for Mamba or I go for uh, rebounding, you know, I'm, I'm selfish. But if I was really playing to win and there's money on the line, I'm popping playmaking takeover if I'm a lock, power forward, or center. If there's money on the line and I'm a lock, power forward, or center, I'm popping playmaking takeover because that's going to change the game and that's going to help my teammates out. Now, if you're a point guard or shooting guard, go with shooting takeover. This is the reason why I rank these takeovers like this. Remember, number one, playmaking. Number two, shooting. Number three, defense. Number four, physicals. Number five, finishing. So don't use physicals or finishing at all. Uh, maybe defense, but you want to go with shooting and playmaking. Playmaking number one. If you're a role player, you don't want to pop playmaking. If you're a shooting guard or point guard, your objective is to score. Now if you're a lock, power forward, center, pop playmaking. So I love you guys. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. I just showed you guys the best takeover and the best perks. I love you guys. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. It's your boy Ofab, and I'm out.